Welcome to The Kingdom, a podcast dedicated to CCBC Essex Athletics in a land defended by Sir Ross's Knights. Now here's your host, Rocco Jeff. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to the Kingdom Podcast. I'm your host, Rocco Jeppy, and boy, has the Kingdom been busy since last we posted our uh, last episode. A lot going on here with cross-country men's and women's soccer, so let's jump right in. We're going to start out on the race course with men's and women's cross-country. The Knights, their first meet of the season on Friday, September the 3rd, And it was at Hood College for the annual Blazer Twilight Invitational. The Knights finishing number two on the men's side, just four points behind Hood, who won the race from a team standpoint. All six of the Knights runners, five men, one woman, placed in the top 15. Let's start with Braden Berkey. Braden Berkey finishing the race number two overall, less than five seconds behind the eventual winner. His time in the 5K of 19 minutes, 7.2 seconds, is good enough for third in school history. So first race out of 2021, and Berkey already getting himself into top five in the Knights 5K record book. Not to be outdone, Sam Smith continues to be a strong runner for this team. He finished the race in the sixth spot. 20 minutes, 42.8 seconds, and his mark is good enough to get him in the record books, excuse me, record books, top 15 in school history with that time. Izzy Romero and Isaiah Haley representing the Knights well, finishing 10th and 11th respectively. Romero, uh, Romero finishing with a time of 21 minutes, 58 seconds, and Isaiah Haley finishing with a time of 22 minutes, 9 seconds. Patrick Bennett, he got into the top 15 as well, finishing 23-43 for 15th place. Madison Magaha, on the women's side, the only Knights women's runner last week. She's one of two on the team, uh, including Natalia Johnson. And Madison had herself a day with a top 20 school time, 25 minutes, 52.8 seconds, and she finished 10th in the race. After this race, head coach Noah Hutton said this of his team, This group of young athletes is the hardest working and most dedicated team I've ever coached at Essex. And so far, just one race in. Uh, It looks like he's not straying far from the truth. This week, the Knights head to their next race, which will be tomorrow, Saturday the 11th, the Dutchman Invitational, hosted by Lebanon Valley College. The women... They get started at 10 a.m. and the men at 11 a.m. We'll have the details posted for that one on our website. For more information, head over to ccbcessexnights.com or your uh, you can stop by the Twitter site at ccbcessexsports. Again, that race tomorrow, the Dutchman Invitational, and uh, I think in, in doing some research, this is their 48th annual. Uh, Dutchman Invitational. So congratulations to Lebanon Valley College. This race will take place at Union Canal Tunnel Park in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. So great job by the cross-country team. And uh, remember, last season cross-country did not race. So to be able to get out and uh, get out so quickly out of the gates, you know, we're really happy and proud of our cross-country team. Follow them on Twitter at CCBC Essex underscore XC to stay up to date with the men's and women's cross country team. All right, again, congratulations for cross country. Now we shift our attention to the pitch, and um, what a what a week it's been. The we're going to start with the women. The women on uh, the beginning of the week, right after Labor Day, the weekly poll released. And the Knights find out that they shifted six spots going from number 20 to number 14 in the NJCAA Division II poll. So congratulations for that. And since last we spoke, the Knights have gone 2-0. They've extended their home, or excuse me, their opening season winning streak to four. They are now 4-0. Uh, one of the games since the last podcast, 
They defeated Mercer County, who was here in the kingdom. Final score in that one, 6-2. to two. That was on Saturday the 4th. Kara Dietrich, four goals, one assist. And she was all, also voted NJCAA Division II Women's Soccer Player of the Week for Week 1. That is her third such award. Uh, Mackenzie Hunt and Aya Neal each had a goal in that game against Mercer County as well. And uh, here's gonna just going to play a little bit of that for you. We're going to play uh, Kara's first goal here. And the goals by Aya and Mackenzie. Here's the call. A great through ball by Neil Dietrich. Puts it through. Oh, my. And the goalie's out. Dietrich crosses. Open net. And they do come through with the goal. You give quick transition opportunities just like that. And Aya Neal. All right. There you have the first goal of the day by Kara. And then goals later on by Mackenzie and Aya. Uh, bringing you the call, the night, the excuse me, the voice of the Knights, Aaron Thomas, on that call. A special thank you to Aaron for lending his voice to the podcast. Next up, the Knights on Thursday, September 9th, they traveled to Hartford Community College in Bel Air, Maryland, to take on the Fighting Owls, and this match will be a tough one. The Knights escape with a two-to-one victory. Both Knights goals scored by Kara Dietrich, the first goal coming in the 44th minute right before halftime to give the Knights a 1-0 lead. And uh, during that first half, the Knights had their opportunities, took a total of 15 shots, and just just got that one goal. I, I say just because Harford played tough. They marked up. They tried to keep Kara quiet but she finished the game with six shots on goal and those two goals in the 71st minute the home team tied it up uh fighting owls riley klug took a pass from lauren westbrook and tied that one up at 70 minutes 45 seconds in the 87th minute of play kara dietrich put the knights ahead for good um her second one of the game her 93rd goal in her career and the Knights go on to win that one by a score of 2-1. to one. And looking at the, the final stat lines on this one, um, the Knights, 33 shots overall as compared to just 14 for Harford. And of those 33 shots, 15 on goal. Um, the, the Harford keeper, 13 saves on the night. Uh, Becky Brittle, Brittell. Congratulations to her for having a good game between the pipes and for your Knights keeping this one at just a, a one goal um, for the Fighting Owls was Sydney Baker. Baker finished the game with five saves. That is the most saves she's had in a game this season so far. Great work by her in enemy territory as the Knights get the road victory. Knights sit at 4-0 and their next game coming up on Sunday the 12th when they face Monroe Community College right here in the kingdom. Game time for that one is going to be 11 a.m. So late morning, early afternoon contest here in the kingdom. Come on out, check it out, and then get on with the rest of your day. If you can't be here for it, no worries. We got you covered. You can watch it live on the YouTube home of the Knights, youtube.com slash ccbc essex nights. We're going to take a quick break here, not too long, about 15 seconds, let's call it. And when we return, we will talk more about the men's soccer team who are ranked pretty high. And if you don't already know, you're going to want to stay tuned to find out where they rank. Here on the Kingdom Podcast, a podcast dedicated to CCBC Essex Athletics. Let's talk about college. Times have changed, and I say no to an education at the cost of crippling debt. Because paying off student loans for the next 30 years is not in my financial plans. Rethink what's possible with CCBC. Visit us online and see what you can be. And we are back here on the Kingdom Podcast. I'm Rocco Jeppe. Thank you for joining us. And as we just finished talking about Cross Country, successful start to their season on Friday the 3rd of September. They went into Hood College for the Blazer Twilight Invitational, finishing number two overall on the men's side with Braden Berkey, the number two runner in the individual sense. And then on the women's side, Madison Magaha, 
the Knights' only female runner. She finishes with a top 20 time in school history. Berkey, as we mentioned, his his time was third in school history, both for the 5K. And women's soccer, they sit at 4-0 and to start the season, ranked number 14 in the country. Most recent game on Thursday, the 9th of September, as they took care of business on the road against Hartford Community College, winning that one 2-1. to We will stay with soccer, where uh, things have have heated up for the Knights as going into their game on September 7th against Frederick, the Knights getting news that they were number one in the NJCAA Division II weekly poll, surpassing Southeastern, who had lost the previous week. The Knights moved from number two to number one in the country, and they continued their win streak in fine fashion, taking on Division One Frederick here at home, and this game was a battle back and forth. They went after the first half. We remained scoreless. Essex on top in the shot, seven to two overall, and seven first half corner kicks. The Knights would end the night with ten corner kicks uh, in that first half. Frederick keeper Gavin Pinnell made five saves, only one opportunity for Lamaster, but he took care of it, and the Knights. In the 69th minute, yes, they had to wait till the 69th minute to pick that goal up in the final one to nothing score. Taki Murakawa, his second goal of the season, and it was a nice shot, a beautiful strike, and here to tell you about it on the call, once again, is Aaron Thomas. Four-man wall set up right there on the box, now a little bit into the box, about a yard in, three players, Stewart. Two step overs and the shot. It's good! Goal! Oh my! Taki Murakawa! Dun na dun na Thank you again, Aaron. That call brought to you by Chick fil A Nottingham Square. To learn more about Chick fil A Nottingham Square, visit our website at ccbcessexnights.com and scroll to the bottom of that website. You'll see the Chick fil A ad. Click there to learn more about their location located right up the street from the kingdom in Nottingham Square. So the Knights take care of business in fine and, uh, you know, exciting fashion against the Cougars of Frederick. Wasting um, very little time, they took on Harford Community College just two days later, and this one their first road game, or excuse me, their second road game of the season, and the Knights going into the break again scoreless, but again peppering the opposing keeper with shots, 19 first half shots with three corner kicks. It remains scoreless at the half in the 68th minute. Andy Portillo said enough of this and just lit the bottom left corner of the goal to put the Knights on the board. In the 82nd minute, Togo Katsuma, he picked up a goal to make it 2 to nothing, And uh, just to keep it, you know, a big enough margin, Henry Ortiz took the pass from Katsuma and got a third goal for the Knights in this one. The Knights victorious on the road in Bel Air, Maryland. Final score, three to nothing. Sophomore goalie Brendan Lamaster stopped all three shots that came his way. And um, you know, ho- hopefully Ben Cook, the Fighting Owls starting keeper, uh, got some time after the game to, to get some good stretching in because he was busy. 20 shots on goal for the Knights. He made 17 saves before uh, being lifted with four minutes to go. Uh, taking over was Emmanuel Moretti for the Fighting Owls, but this one was already in the bag by that point. So now the Knights will prepare their next game. Going to be another challenge as they head to Columbia to take on Howard Community College Dragons. That one set to take place on Tuesday, September 14th. Live stats and video available to learn more and get that link for the game visit our website ccbcessexnights.com go to the Knights men's soccer schedule and those links are right there in the schedule so the Knights get away unblemished through their first four games this season and um, you know right now it's a it's a great time to be a fan of the kingdom as cross country 
has a great start to their season. Both soccer teams are ranked in the national top 15, with the men, of course, ranked number one, both Division Two. Just around the corner is the much-anticipated return of women's basketball, as Mike Sini has been preparing his squad for the start of the season. More information coming up on that team as we get closer to the season later on this month. And um, we're looking forward to that big time because that, that squad looking very good. You know, I know you, you can only tell so much from practice, but you know we've seen this story before and we are ready for women's basketball to return. I want to thank you for sticking around for this episode of the Kingdom Podcast, our fifth episode of the year and uh, we, we thank you very much it's um, you know not not a long episode and we're trying to stay away from long episodes because we know you have a lot to do in your day but we still need to inform you about the Knights and how well they're doing and what's going on here in the kingdom remember you can follow us at all times at night at ccbcessexknights.com we're on Twitter and Instagram at ccbc. Essex Sports and um, all of our teams on social media. Remember to check out the links in this podcast for more information on them. Once again, thank you for joining me. This is Rocco Jeffy saying so long. I hope you stop by next time. Take care.